Recursion is a topic that is simple in its basic form, but can be complicated to grasp when first starting out. It is also a topic that is important to understand as a C-sharp developer. In this video, we're gonna learn what recursion is and how to utilize it properly in an application. We will also talk about the best practices for using recursion, as well as the pitfalls to avoid. Now, if you wanna go further in C-sharp, I have over 700 videos on this channel to help you out. If you wanna go even deeper, I would encourage you to check out the dev pass on imtimcorey.com. For one monthly fee, you get access to all the courses on imtimcorey.com. That's hundreds of hours and thousands of dollars worth of content at your fingertips. So let's get started here in Visual Studio. We're gonna create a brand new project. We're gonna create a console application. We're gonna try and keep it as simple as possible. So we're gonna put this in the demos folder and we're gonna call this recursion app, recursion demo, recursion demo app. There we go. And .NET 8, leave the rest alone. We hit create. So I'm gonna try to keep this really simple because there are some demos you can do with recursion. For example, um, a factorial is an example you often see with, with recursion, but then you start to have to figure out what the math is and how that works. We're not gonna worry about math. We're gonna keep things really simple. In .NET, there is the ability to do this. We're gonna say string array directories equals directory dot, I'm gonna turn off the um, suggestions here because they're getting annoying. Okay, directory dot get directories and you pass it in a, well, let's just call this for now directory path, which we don't have yet. Okay, so let's create a directory path and I will say const string directory path equals, and I put the, um, the at symbol first. What this allows me to do is it makes this a, um, a verbatim string, which means basically there are escape characters you can put in a string and it says, you know what? No, don't, no escape characters. That means I can do something like this where I see, say C colon slash demos. If I didn't have this uh, string verbatim character, then it says, oops, no, that's not right because this is an escape character and it's saying you're escaping a D. No, that's not right. I have to say slash slash, but that doesn't match up with how I would actually copy and paste it from a uh, file explorer. So I'm going to use the um, verbatim string, which allows me to just type out a path. So that's my path that I wanna look at and get the, the directories in this directory, right? So I'm gonna say, and we're gonna get the uh, recursion in just a minute. But first, I'm gonna say for each, and we'll say var uh, dir in um, directories, okay? And we're just going to do a console write line on each directory. And that's gonna print out the directory name. So let's just run this just to see what it would look like to run this. And so we get the C demos console one app or console app one, and then C demos recursion demo app. That's because we've got the um, application recursion demo app inside of the folder we're looking at for recursion. Huh, I wonder how I did that. Um, so that's the, the two folders that are inside there. So cool, we now have a, a way to get the folders that are inside of a certain path. But aren't there folders underneath those folders? Well, yeah, there are. So then we could do something like this where we say, well, let's get those directories. So we'd say uh, for each dir in directory, we could say um, string um, inner dirs equals directory dot get directories and then pass in that directory. Um, and, and by the way, it's a string array, not a string. There we go. And then we could do a for each in there 
where you say D in integers and say console write line D, right? Because now for each directory we found, we're looking for the directories inside that directory. And we run this and there we go. So now console app one, what well, has a .vs folder, it has a console app one folder. This one has a .vs and it has a recursion demo folder. So we're now one level deeper. But then how do you go one level deeper? Well, we would do the same thing again. We'd put it right inside here. And that's getting ugly, right? Because now for every level deeper you want to go, you have to do this nested for each. And that's just a mess. There's got to be a better way. And in fact, there is a better way of doing this. So let's figure out that better way. And to start with, what we're going to do is we're going to cut this out. We're going to put it into a method. We're going to say static void display. Let's see a long name. Display directories in directory. Okay. We're going to pass in a path. Okay. We're going to paste that in here and we're going to say use the path instead of the, the direct directory path. And then up here, for right now, we'll just say um, display, there we go, and pass in directory path. Okay, so we're gonna, we haven't really done much different. We've just wrapped this code in a method and we've called the method. In fact, let's just run this and see that, yep, we're back to the, we haven't done the nested because he took that nesting out, but we're back to having something that works, right? Something that actually um, captures those two directories. We want to have this go deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper into our file system until there are no more directories. How do we do this? Well, what we would do is inside of this for each loop, we would call display directories and pass in dir. Well, what are we doing here? The method is called display directory directories in directory, which we call at the root, but then in the for each for every directory we find, we call the display directories in directory, which is this same method. This is recursion. When a method calls itself. Now you may say, well, how does that work? Well, it's going to pass in the directory, the two directories it's found and call this method, which is itself twice with that new path. But then we pass that path in and it finds all the directories in that particular directory. It's going to do the for each and then call itself again for every one of those directories. And it keeps going down. And in fact, let's just run this real quick so we can see it. There is our list of all of the directories under C demos because it looked up console app one and said, okay, now you need to call that display directories in directory on console app one. And it says, oh, well, there's dot VS and there's console app one. And I think that's it. But then it said, okay, well, we're a call on dot VS. Well, dot VS has console app one and console app. Well, it has some other need there, but it also has um, uh, been, like, it, it keeps going down the path every step along the way. So actually it has two, I guess, console app one dot VS. Um, but then underneath console app one, we have bin, we have OBJ. But under OBJ, we have debug and that's it. But under debug, we have net eight. And then underneath net eight, we have ref and uh, ref int. So this allows us to traverse an entire tree by calling itself. So very, very simple, but very, very powerful. Because we didn't have to keep nesting our four eaches, which technically we did. We technically nested our four eaches, but we use a, a method instead of writing that for each. And we just called that method. Because if you write out the code of what's actually happening, well, for each element for every directory in here, it's doing a lookup for that directory. And then it's doing a for each on those directories. And then if it finds directories, it does it again, again, again. But as far as our code is concerned, we have 16 lines of code and I've got some extra spacing in here um, in order to call as many deep as you want. 
and you could get into some trouble here. Like you could say Windows, if I spell it right, and run this and watch it. Well, it's gonna lock up on price and security issues. Um, yep, unauthorized. Um, nope, don't run that. So there are other folders you could run that. Um, maybe program 32, actually program files. Let's try that one and see if we get better luck on. Yeah, see, there you go. So you could be careful. You might have a seizure if you watch too long. But, and there's, and again, access denied. Um, we could probably put some code in there to protect against access denied. We're not, the focus is not about looking up directories. The focus is about the fact that you can use this recursion as deep as you want, and it can keep going and going and going. And therein lies one of the pitfalls, okay? That is that, you might not want to do that. You might not want to allow it to go forever. In fact, one of the very clear things, let's go back to demos here. Um, one of the very clear things you want to have in your recursion is a bottom, a floor. You want some way to know when you've hit the end. So in our case, if you look up a directory and that directory has no directories in it, that's going to be an empty array. Well, then the for each doesn't run, therefore it does not call itself again. It ends. When a, when a directory has no more directories inside of it, that's when it stops that level. What you don't want is something that just continues on. Uh, let's say you were doing some kind of math operation, maybe just adding together, but you called itself, well, if it kept adding up and there was no top end to stop at, it would just keep going until it, it you know, got past the memory limits of whatever uh, number you type you're storing. So that wouldn't be good. You wanna make sure that you have a way for this to be done and not get caught in an infinite loop. That's a very big uh, danger of recursion is that you create some type of infinite loop. You don't wanna do that. So how can you stop that? Well, one of the things to think about is, do I need to have all these levels? Do I need to have this go down as far as it can or you know, process everything? Maybe not. For example, maybe we wanna say, you know what? I wanna limit this, this particular method to only go X number of levels deep. And you could say something like this, int uh, depth. And we're gonna say that the depth starts off at zero, okay? So what the depth is gonna be is when we get to zero, it's gonna count down. When it gets to zero, it doesn't go any deeper. So we're gonna cut this out um, or wrap it. Let's just right click on say, um, it's snip it and surround with. And then not the hashtag if, it's just type out if and then hit tab. And that surrounds that code with our if statement. We're gonna say if depth is greater than zero, okay, then I want you to call this again. We're gonna pass in a depth minus one. All right, so what are we doing here? Well, if you pass in zero, well, let's run this right now. I've got a default value of zero. Let's just run it real quick and see we only get the top level folders. Well, why? Because it started off at zero and says zero depth is not greater than zero because it is zero. Therefore, it doesn't call itself, it does not do any recursion. But let's path or let's pass in instead a value of one, which would be one layer of recursion. All right, and we run this. And now notice we get the console app and the recursion demo app folders. We also get the .vs inside of console app one and the console app one inside of console app one. So you get the next layer in of folders. Same is true for our recursion demo app. We have the next layer of folders inside. He's got one level of recursion. If we pass in two, well, then we get two layers of recursion. So dot VS, but then the dot or the console app one inside of dot VS. And same thing with bin OBJ inside of the nested console app one folder. So we get one layer deeper into a recursion. 
we could say, you know what, 99, like go go 99 or maybe even pass something in where like negative one means, you know, uh, go forever. Or maybe zero means that or something. I'm not sure. Probably not zero, probably negative one. But um, this allows you to limit how far the recursion goes if you want to, in addition to making sure you always have that floor, that uh, recursion stops here type floor, even without something like this, um, if possible. Okay, in our case, that's definitely possible because there's going to be an end to the folder structure, um, hopefully. So let's say you're you know, looking at a node folder. But in this, what we're, we've got here is a way to not just have recursion, but also control it to an extent, okay? So this is important to think through because it also kind of illustrates how recursion works. Because we pass in two, so DAP is two, right? And so we get the, the two directories that are in that root of C demos. And for each of those, we call display directory in directory, or directories in directory, and we pass in the directory we found and a depth of depth minus one. So we pass in a two and we pass in a, then a one for each of these. So each of these gets a one. So now it's the next level deep path and the depth is one. And then it finds the directories and it says, okay, for each of those, well, depth of one is greater than zero. So therefore do recursion. And it says, okay, one minus one, that's zero. And so then it stops at that level the next time, because next time it's gonna say zero is not greater than zero, therefore don't uh, execute the if statement. Okay, so that's how that works. And we're not modifying the depth, like you wouldn't wanna do something like this, where you'd say um, depth uh, minus equals one, because then that would modify it for the next time you loop through. And so if you had two directories in your for each, which we do on the root of it, well, then the first one would pass in one for the depth and the next one would pass in zero for the depth. That's not good. This is why we do depth minus one because this does not modify depth. But the next time it gets called, we have one less to our depth. So that's recursion. And yes, it can be tricky to wrap your brain around the fact that You've got a method calling itself, but really that's all it is. That's all recursion is, is a method calling itself. But you gotta be careful not to have it loop infinitely. This is where a stack overflow exception would come in because you just ran out of memory because you just you know threw everything at it and it kept going. You don't want that. You wanna make sure you have that floor, something to stop on when you've, you've gone through the entire depth um, and you're done, okay? So, but recursion is just a method calling itself. You can put limiters in there if you want and just think through how, you know, that might be getting, a, you know, we don't want to be able to get around those limiters. We wanna make sure that we use the limiters properly, but that allows us to um, further limit how much recursion we do. Okay, so that's recursion. If you have any questions, leave them down in the comments below. I'll at least review them. I'm not sure I can get to all the comments or questions, but I, I give it my best shot. All right, thanks for listening. As always, I am Tim Corey.